Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We need justice for Breonna Taylor. We need justice for Elijah McClain. And we need justice for Vanessa Gillian. Welcome to the sports arena. Good evening. What is up, everyone? It is another segment of the Sports Arena. You have your co-host here, uh, Ruth the Truth Cagius. And this evening, we have a lot to get to because sports is back. It is making a comeback, and we are all back in our happy bubbles when it comes to being able to see our live sports on TV. So tonight, we're going to be focusing on a lot on the NBA because they've had some great games over the weekend. Some injuries have come up that we are definitely going to discuss, as well as some some upsets that may have gone on during the weekend. Uh, first, I'll be having uh, Jake Ronholt joining me. He is going to be from Turning Point Podcast, telling both sides of the story. My, how are you doing, Jake, on this lovely Monday night? I couldn't be more happier right now. I mean, we got NHL playoffs happening right now, and then we just had the Pelicans and the Grizzlies in a thriller. So it's just great to have sports back. But I'm still kind of flabbergasted that Major League Baseball continues to play. but Yes, there's yeah. a lot of uh, controversy that's going on with the whole COVID-19 uh, virus and the, how it's affecting MLB. And some might say that MLB might be dropping the ball on how they're handling the situation. <laughs> Another great host that we have coming to talk to us is Michael Caratanudo from Believe in the Pac-12. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. I'm pretty stoked. Uh, Remy Martin's coming back for ASU. He announced that yesterday. So the the Devils could literally be actually favored to win the Pac-12 for the first time. Well, since it became the Pac-12, which is crazy. Right. But yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. There's hockey. Yeah, the Cardinals are just another. Um, St. Louis Cardinals are just another team on my list, Jake. That um, that I'm just so sick. Like I. I don't know how many times I could say it's like, I would love to have gotten on a flight and come hang out with you guys in Florida, but guess what? I'm not, not because of the numbers are high because health officials forget the politics. Like we said last week of it, stay away from each other, stay quarantined. Like I get going out into great wide open spaces. Yes. I work out. I walk every day. I stay away from, you know, people I haven't been around, but the fact that, Oh, they had to go to a casino. Like it's just, it, it's it's so annoying because people are like, well, they need to be around people. Yeah, we we would love to be around people. I'd love to be in Florida to make this, I don't know, easier. But at the same time, like, it, it's ridiculous what baseball is doing. I'm with you guys on that. Yeah, I think it's a little uh, coincidental how Arizona and Florida has been a huge hotspot for the coronavirus. And now both MLB teams have been falling to this illness that has suspended their games. Uh, I believe we do have Alex Fleming also joining us this evening. <laughs> Maybe not. Is he not here yet? Let's see. One, two, three. No, Alex. Ooh. All right. So we are going to move on. Um, first, let's talk about the NBA and the phenomenal opening week that they've had. It's been it's been crazy having the NBA in the bubble, but it seems like it's working out for them. Jake, what would you say that the other leagues should be paying attention with how the NBA is running things? Everybody should be paying attention to how the NBA and the NHL have been doing their job. This bubble has been a monster hit. I mean, you look at the NHL with Edmonton and Toronto, but I mean, what is happening in a hot box right now of COVID-19 for the NBA to continue this with no COVID cases is a monumental success. And it's been fantastic. A lot of fun games. I mean, we had Rockets, Mavericks. We had the Raptors take down the Lakers. Uh, we had, you know, the Magic were playing really well against the Kings, but unfortunately, we had a situation with Jonathan Isaac that really just broke my heart. He just got back from injury. He was out for 31 games. And, you know, it's always the pros and cons of it, but at the end of it, it's been entertaining. The players have all been in it. It's been, you know, aside from Saturday, Saturday was just domineering. It was too many blowouts for me, but then Sunday – it was a lot more, it was a lot better, a lot more fun. And it's just going to continue that way. Pelicans and the Grizzlies, they had a good thriller. The conversation between Zion Williamson, it, should he leave? Should he stay? It, it, you know, it's just, it's great to see that the NBA is still the talk of the town right now. And if you're Major League Baseball, if you're the NFL, just take a listen, see what baseball, uh, see, excuse me, basketball, and hockey have been doing. But 
I mean, overall, big winner, the NBA, especially when you're in the United States where COVID-19 just runs rampant. Absolutely. And we also have another person joining us today. Alex Fleming, thank you so much for coming on. We have him on uh, Turf Talk every Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Make sure that you are checking him out. Alex, so nice to have you on, but we're going to jump right into things. How do you think that the other leagues should be following up with what the NBA is doing and how they're handling the whole coronavirus? Thank you for having me. My apologies for being late. You know what I do. I'm a Better late than never. MLB is a joke. All right. Yeah. So the Cardinals have already had a couple of COVID-19 tests. Marlins wanted to go to Tattletales in Atlanta and shake the tail feather with some nasty, dirty booty. And that's Magic how you Monday. have 17 to 18 dirty Marlins players. Manfred is on the doorsteps of saying, we got to cancel the season. That's already been shortened. These overpaid scallywags were supposed to play originally start of April. Now here it is, July-August. And oh my God, we got about 32 dirty MLB players who've come down with COVID-19. The Yankees, the Phillies, the Orioles, the Marlins, the Tigers, the Brewers, and the Cardinals have already been affected. So maybe the league's strongest union could pay attention to the NBA, actually quarantine some people, do some standard testing, and do things right. And don't worry, the NFL is in lockstep. These people are going to be hitting each other for 60 minutes strong, but they can't trade jerseys. Look for there to be some COVID in NFL that's already been happening. Matthew Stafford tested positive for COVID-19, amongst other. And the 43 so far of the opt-outs. It's only going to get worse. Mike, I got to take it to you. What do you think the rest, of this, uh, the rest of the sports, professional sports, should learn from the NBA? And how do you think they can apply that during their season? Well, baseball won't learn because, like Alex just said, and like I said before you got here, Alex, I mean, the Cardinals went to a freaking casino, which is just pathetic. And I was saying to Ruth and Jake, like, I'd love to go hop on a flight to Florida and hang out with you guys. It wouldn't be responsible. I mean, but for to, for football and baseball to take anything, I mean, you, you know, one of my good friends actually said baseball could have taken four cities and had – basically a bubble in four cities and he made a good point because they're getting tested all through summer camp before they get there once they get there like i mean like and like alex said they're overpaid but they'll get everything they want in their hotel rooms yes you know they'll be able to go to the ballparks and practice fields and and work out but like they're just so irresponsible they complain about wanting to get paid and all the money stuff but yet they can't be responsible enough. And yeah, I mean, the NBA players the WNBA players, you guys have seen and heard it. Like, I mean, yeah, they're trying to stay busy. And what some, a lot of them have said, as long as they have their video games, they're good to go. And yeah, I mean, it's driving them a little nuts, but at the same time, like just be responsible and baseball players just can't be responsible. It seems like, so that's, that's a Absolutely. frustrating part. The well, NBA okay. is getting it done. They are getting the job done. And WNBA is not far behind them with having continuous zero testing for all players that are, you know, playing in the bubble in Bradenton. So we're going to we're going to jump right into the games that we had going on. I don't know about you guys, but the first overtime game in the bubble definitely had all my attention. The Mavericks and the Houston Rockets went into overtime. And but the Rockets came up successful. Was anybody shocked with the outcome of that game? Jake, I'll start with you. I had a feeling that the Mavericks were going to come back down to earth when they scored 85 points at halftime. I couldn't believe that was even a number. I mean, we were looking at the score and what was that, the final score? No, that was what was happening at this point. The Rockets were 7 for 17 from the three-point line. They were over 41% for the Mavericks. But then what happens? James Harden happens. And, you know, one of the things that people keep saying, and I've talked to a lot of NBA fans about this, is if you put James Harden in overtime, you're done for. And 49 points, he goes off, takes down the Mavericks. They're gassed. They don't know what to do anymore. Aside from Trey Burke's epic performance where he hit 29 points, it just wasn't enough. Porzingis wasn't a big help at that point. Their bench was a mess at that time. And for the Rockets to really step up their game was incredible to see because I was saying to myself, if Seth Curry would have just hit that final free throw, two of the two, then the Rockets would have been down by four, not by three. And then you get that chance to that tip in for Robert Cummington 
it was crazy. But also talk about that Bucks Rockets game once again. Yes, I was about to go there. Outplaying the Rockets the entire game until the fourth quarter. It feels like when the fourth quarter happens for the Houston Rockets and they're in this game by five points or lower, they have a chance to come out get past you, take the lead, and win in thrilling fashion. I mean, and that's just a lot of credit to Mike D'Antoni. Understand you've got to keep playing the small ball, but guess what? When you got Russell Westbrook, who has 31 points in the first game, 32 points last night, James Harden on off night, 21 for 61 from the three-point line, you would say to yourself, the Rockets should be losing. But for right. some reason, they just find a way. If it's not James Harden, it's Russell Westbrook. And as long as those two superstars are playing with great chemistry, the Rockets are going to be a team to be reckoned with. Oh, absolutely. I agree. And they had uh, moments during the Bucks and Rockets game where James Harden was defending Giannis, defending in the Greek. And they were going back and forth all game. Why it. does it surprise you that the Rockets are making a, a name for themselves and letting everybody know that they are not going down without a fight, no matter how small the ball that they're playing. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, small ball or not, these guys are 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", and they all have big wingspans. I mean, that's the thing. And, you know, Harden wanted to play defense against Giannis due to the fact that before the All-Star break, I know they started taking shots at each other. Uh, Giannis, you know, the same, he doesn't, he's not going to take anybody doesn't play defense. Hard and fired back, as we know. But, yeah, the Rockets were the team that I thought, if they did play any bit of defense, could could actually make it to the finals, could upset both L.A. teams. Not that they'd have to see both, but could upset either one of them. Um, I like I like what the Rockets have done. And, Jake, I mean, you, you said it, too. I mean, in the playoffs, we all know that the last few years, I mean, there's been a game, one game each series, whether it be the elimination game, that they have missed a ton of threes. I know they were like seven for 27 uh, at one stretch uh, a few years ago. And then, I mean, they just bombed it. But if they hit those threes, which they can do, and they actually, for like you said, Ruth, for at points in time, play defense and just give effort on the defensive end like Harden was doing against Giannis. And, I mean, again, using the long arms. I mean, it's not always going to work in a seven-game series. It would be tough. But they proved against Dallas, like Jake said, they can just flat out outscore you if they're hitting their shots. So they're not a surprise to me. I do have to give a shout out, even though they have no chance to win at all. But the Suns at least won their first two games. Everybody here was saying, oh, it's a waste of time. <laughs> no, was... I mean, you guys are laughing. No, you guys are laughing. But everybody here is saying, no, 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 it's, no, a waste, it's, it's good, a waste actually. of time. It's a good laugh. I know, but everybody was saying it's a waste of time that they go. They're not. I mean, again, I'm not saying the competition right. was the best. But to your point with Houston, man, if they can play a defense for – like you said, the fourth quarter, keep it close and play defense in the fourth quarter. Nobody's going to outwork him. And, and Jake, lastly, to your point, I mean, Russ Brooks not chucking threes anymore. He's not the best three point no, shooter. He's, no. he's using it. He's using the mid range shot. So, you know what? That's I mean, what he got hardened for. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he doesn't look like the Russell Westbrook that we knew from Oklahoma City when it looked like he was going 100 miles an hour and he was, was making many mistakes as well as making great moves. But now we're seeing them kind of like calm down. And maybe that's just because of James Harden. I don't know. But, I mean, I've never seen Russell Westbrook play like this. He's like the Energizer Bunny out there. But he's not making mistakes. And he's not costing his team. And it actually, for the first time, doesn't feel like Russell Westbrook has to throw the team on his back and try and lead him to the promised land. Instead, he does have James Harden to help out. And even, even this help, P.J. Tucker has actually been a blessing in disguise, too. He's been very good in the low post, Solid. making those defensive moves. And also, you can find him wide open, right off that top shelf, and hit that three-point shot if you need it. So P.J. Tucker has been that blessing in disguise that has helped out Westbrook and Harden. But let's also talk about a team that has been very disappointing to me. That's the Utah Jazz. I don't know if the Utah Jazz, you got Donovan Mitchell, you got Rudy Gobert, you got Mike Conley. And you can't beat the Oklahoma City Thunder? What is going on with you? Do you want to be here or not? Because I know that there's a team in Phoenix that wants to be in here and has actually been able to get off a couple of wins while you are struggling right now. And now you're struggling against the Lakers tonight. So I got to know, Utah, do you want to be here or not? That's for my biggest disappointment. And then the Pelicans, you know, if Zion Williamson, if you're not healthy, you have to make a decision for your own. Do you want to finish out the season or do you want to leave? Because if the Pelicans are going to continuously play this limited minutes, 
then move on with it because I'm just not impressed with the Pelicans either. Alex Fleming, I miss your voice. I need to hear your take on what is some of the biggest shocking moments that happened over the season or over the weekend. And do you feel like the Rockets really have a chance to come out the West? Hell no. H-E-L-L no. Their lack of size is going to kill the Rockets. Look, Russell Westbrook has always been an alpha. He was an alpha in Oklahoma City. He was an alpha when Kevin Durant was there. He was an alpha when Kevin Durant left. Understand something. Sooner or later, their lack of size is going to catch up with them. You have to think this is the end of the regular season going into the playoffs. What the hell are they going to do against the Lakers and Anthony Davis and all the big guys they got with Dwight Howard and, and Travell McGee? Oh, better, better, better yet. How the hell is that matchup going to work out against the Clippers? Yeah, exactly. The Houston playoff team, nothing more. Now, as far as the child abuse that I saw this weekend between the Pelicans and the Clippers, we all saw a crime committed. You know, I don't know why anybody didn't call the cops and say, 911, <laughs> these kids are getting beat up. I'm sorry. I can't stand here and watch this. It was 103 to 66. They, they had Kawhi Leonard and Paul George sit oh, at the bench in order for the Pelicans to even make it look somewhat respectable. I can't believe we all stood by and watched that child abuse. Number three, Lakers were sleeping on Toronto. Lakers got up for the Clippers. They were feeling themselves, and they were really lackadaisical against the defending champions. And then at the end of the game, LeBron James is going to do a backhanded compliment by saying Toronto's a good team. Look really, what they've Alex. done without Kawhi Leonard. No, Alex, Kawhi you're absolutely right about Toronto. Name out your mouth. Right. No, every time he's right about Toronto got, because everybody felt Kawhi Leonard. Him. Kawhi's made you look bad or – or not like the king you're supposed to be. Everybody knows that the Western Conference Finals is going to be the Clippers and the Lakers. Jake Ronghall from Turning Point Podcast. I really want you to get your take on the biggest shot that you had going on this season or this weekend. The biggest, the biggest shot to me, honestly, and so far has been what I saw against the Philadelphia isn't Indiana necessarily Bay. the best against some of these teams nope. that are now fresh in the bubble. Jake, I'm swinging it back to you. No, it's all good. No, it's all good. Let Alex let Alex go free here. But honestly, <laughs> the biggest disappointment of all had to be the Philadelphia 76ers. TJ Warren rattles off 53 points on you. And then the guy I talked about a couple weeks ago, Shake Milton, the one that would look like he was looking pretty sharp. Comes out, zero points. Ben Simmons, 19 points as the power forward. What is going on in Philadelphia? You're going to have to make a decision now, Elton Brand. Are you going to keep Joel Embiid? Are you going to keep Ben Simmons? Because you can't keep both. They don't work well together. They're like oil and water, and it's a mess. You can't lose to the Indiana Pacers. When all that pressure is on you and the media has fallen head over heels in love with you, thinking you're going to be the team that goes out in the East and come out like that, that's flat, that's inexcusable, and you should not. And I told you guys about the Toronto Raptors. I said this team was going to be the team to represent in the East. Why? Because they have Nick Nurse. And Pascal Siakam has been able to take the throne from Kawhi Leonard, who's now in L.A., and has been able to step up his game. Fred Van Vliet has been able to bring it. Serge Ibaka has been terrific on defense. And then OJ Anobi, thank you for playing such great defense on the likes of Anthony Davis and LeBron James when they needed it. The Toronto Raptors are the team to beat in the East, not the Milwaukee Bucks. No, I, I agree with you. I feel like uh, after Kawhi had left the Raptors, everybody felt like that dynasty was just, or the, the team was just going to collapse and not be a threat coming out the, the East. Michael Caratanudo. <laughs> Please, let me get your take on the Raptors coming out the East. Okay, Jake, I'm not saying you didn't like the Raptors, but you can go back because I know – I love the Raptors. Eric, Eric has a save. I know Eric has a save, but I'm telling you right now that I took the Raptors during the shutdown, as you recall, because I said I would – I go, they're not getting any credit, and they're just hanging right there. Now, Milwaukee, again, they were whooping everybody. They deserve the credit, but Toronto was right there. Um Paul George, to Alex's point, Alex, I mean, if he plays like that, Kawhi can play 
like Kawhi does, but Paul George will be the the finals MVP um, if he plays like like he did that. I, I know it's early; it's one game, but he looks in shape. He looks great. Uh, he's got his hockey playoff beard, so I support that from Paul George. No, but all kidding aside, like the Clippers to me are the team, but I'm not gonna say no way on the Rockets just because. Jake, you're saying Russell Westbrook. I mean, yeah, he did play at a million miles an hour, but he always played like that. Kevin Durant won an MVP next to him, and Russell Westbrook obviously won his MVP too. He can, he can, he's adapted to James Harden, but you're going to look as the playoffs go in, in my opinion, Alex, they're going to split. I mean, yeah, they're going to start the game together, but then when substitutions start rolling the second and third quarter, they're going to be on the floor separately. And they're both going to be able to dominate. And Westbrook's looking for people, like you said, yes, at the three-point line. But there's not still too many people that can keep up with him from baseline to baseline. So that's why I give him the chance. But if Paul George plays like that, I mean, it's it's crazy to call Paul George an X-factor, Alex. But if Paul George keeps that up like he's capable of, the Clippers' depth, I'm sorry, there's going to be nobody close to the Clippers. No one. Alex Fleming, I'm going to go ahead and let you wrap this up before we move on to the next segment. You want me to talk about the East or the West? Both. Bring it to us. All right. Western Conference, Lakers, Clippers. That plain, that simple. Eastern Conference. I like Boston for some reason. Philadelphia is a joke. I'm looking forward to Brett Brown getting fired. He deserves to get fired. Um, As far as Toronto and Milwaukee is concerned, Milwaukee has Boston's number. Well, Toronto has Milwaukee's number, and Boston beats Toronto. That 2-3 series is going to be huge because I do see Milwaukee beating Miami. So it's really going to be about who's matched up with who, who ends up with who. Look, Boston barely beat Dollar Dame, C.J. McCollum, and Melo the other night. That was a hell of a game. Welcome back, you Nurchins. I think Toronto is going to have an issue with the Orlando Magic. Now, if Orlando still had Jonathan Isaac, I say Orlando would beat them. But without Jonathan Isaac, Spicy P is just too much. They're a very well-coached team. If you don't know about Nick Nurse, you need to find somebody and ask for some help. Call me now for your free reading. Jake and I were talking about this last year, and people thought I was crazy when I said Toronto could be the Eastern Conference Finals representative. Now, all of a sudden, people jumping on that bandwagon, you know, like that bang, bang, Niner gang for them in the Super Bowl. Guys, Boston, Toronto. Something about Milwaukee I don't like. I don't know what it is. I think they're too dependent on Middleton and Giannis. And if Lopez isn't a double-double machine, you can expose them down low. Look for Boston to be that quiet sleeper in the East. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your take on things. We are going to take a moment to have a short break for us to view a video that was uh, filmed by the Chicago Sky. We're dedicating this season to social justice. We're challenging you, the fans, to join us. Sky Takes Action means equality. Providing opportunities. Making an immediate impact. Means justice. Sky Takes Action means bringing the community together. Serving others means family. Sky Takes Action means doing your part. Is encouraging others to do more. Period. Sky Takes Action means using our platform to create change. Real change. We've partnered with Athletes for Justice to raise money for Chicago-based charities that are fighting for equality for all. For all. Such a beautiful video. Shout out to the WNBA for continuing their fight and using their platform to voice their opinions about what's going on in the world. It is so uh, excruciating. It's so important for us to keep in mind that though sports is still going on, there's still a fight for uh, social injustice and inequality amongst our United States and the rest of the world. So now that we've spoke about this topic, we're going to go ahead and dive into what happened over the weekend with the Miami Heat star player, Jimmy Butler. He initially started off the game with a jersey that had no name on the back. But before the game started, he was forced to switch into a jersey that ultimately had his last name on the back. Now, he had made some comments, uh, you know, during interviews that 
he was not wearing a name because he feels like he is just the same as any other black man when they are not on the basketball court. So having him not wearing a name is representing all the men that people may not know their names, but they're going through difficulties. So we have Jake Rangholt, Rangholt from Turning Point Podcast. I want to get your take on the Jimmy Butler uniform situation. Well, once again, here we go. And we always have to have, there's always an our side of the story. While we do give credit to the NBA for what they've done with COVID-19, I feel like the social justice thing is still just a little bit muddled. And for what they did to Jimmy Butler, I did not appreciate it at all because LeBron James and Anthony Davis both told them that they were not going to put one of the 29 approved messages on there. They were just going to put their name. That's all they wanted to do with that. And then you get and have such a problem with Jimmy Butler deciding to do something completely outside the box and make him do it. This was a great move to me because it comes to that point with that no, no name, no, and just the number. He said it perfectly in a quote that, and if I wasn't who I was today, I'm no different than anybody else of color and want that to be my message in the sense that just because I'm an NBA player, everybody has the same right, no matter what. And that's how I feel about my people of color. I love that because what you're saying to that is, is that to the people that are saying, oh, you're making all these millions of dollars. Oh, you're having a better life than me. Oh, you have you get a chance to opt down on it. He's telling those people to be quiet. It doesn't matter how much money you have where you live or anything. The fact of the matter is, is that he is standing up for this cause in a completely different outside the box kind of way. And I applaud Jimmy Butler for this and shame on the NBA for continuously being hypocritical in this situation. Alex Fleming from Turf Talk. Can you please give me your opinion on your, your, your brother's, you know, decision to wear no name on the back of his uniform? Do you feel like the NBA should have let it slide? Go ahead, Alex. You don't want my honest opinion because my honest opinion might actually piss a lot of people off. Let me be completely honest whenever I say this. Jimmy Butler was about 16 years old whenever he was leaving a Walmart with his brother. Now, he was about 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 wasn't fully developed, but he was a big guy. A little white kid walked up to his daddy and said, are those the Negroes that you were talking about? Now, imagine Jimmy Butler today wanting to wear a jersey with no name on it, describing all the voiceless, faceless, invisible people that have been shot by cops, beaten, harassed, killed for cigarettes, or had a neck that had a knee on it, and trying to spread the message that, hey, outside of these uniforms, we get treated just like them too. They don't care about us in restaurants. They only care about our money. They don't care what we say because our voice doesn't mean anything because we're million-dollar athletes. We should just shut up and dribble. Or we should just play football and not worry about the fact that COVID-19 has a 99% health risk rate that you can actually salvage. We're not seen as equals in the public eye. Nobody's bitching and complaining about MLB being greedy and being bastards off the field about their contracts. But let an African-American male stand for the national anthem, and he gets treated like Jonathan Isaac. Do Black Lives Matter to you? Better yet, how about if he kneels for the anthem? I'm not watching NBA or NFL ever again for the fifth, sixth, or seventh time I've seen from a lot of you idiots on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can't win for losing because they don't want equality in America. That's not the narrative. We are here to entertain you. And the second you try to act as an equal citizen, we will try to cut you down in any way, shape, or form. And I love the hypocrisy that LeBron James and Anthony Davis can get away with doing it, but Jimmy Buckets can't seem to do it. And he had a clear-cut message. Message. I agree with you completely. Uh, Mike Caratanuto, tell me what you think. Well, Jimmy Butler is very cerebral, and once he saw there was only 29 approved things, I'm guessing – to Alex's point, too, he didn't ask the NBA if he could do that. So he just had his the equipment manager put no name back there. And even though Jimmy Butler on the court like, has become, I mean, as he's gotten more dominant, been that alpha, a little bit more of a diva, it's a phenomenal message. I mean, I have every with everything that's going on. And I mean, even, you know, Alex, I think you touched on this when we talked a few weeks ago. I mean, even like suicide rates across 
like country have been up. I mean, because mm-hmm. of this, you know, if you want to say because of the pandemic or whatever, with, with everything that's going on. But like Jimmy Butler, I mean, it's a voice for everyone letting people know like, yeah, if I'm not doing this, maybe I don't have a voice. But letting people know that you can always fight to have a voice if you're going to be, I don't know if responsible is the word, Ruth, but I mean, if you have a message and an agenda and it can, you can get it out there to millions. I just think it's, you know, the NBA only approving 29 things. I know the players went back and forth and, you know, they, a lot of players weren't happy about it, but Jimmy Butler, like I said, very cerebral, knew what he was doing, a phenomenal message. And it's, it's, People don't want to walk in, like from what Alex is saying too, it's like walking somebody else's shoes for two minutes, you know? And, you know, I mean, two minutes is short, but walk in somebody else's shoes for a day and then see what, you know, they're, what they're dealing with and what they're thinking because Jimmy Butler letting everybody know that they have a voice. I mean, it was a powerful message. And as great as the NBA is with working with their players, as we've all touched on, they also inevitably, like you were saying earlier, Ruth, they kind of dropped the ball on this one because, I, I mean, it was it was per it, it was perfectly done by Jimmy Butler. No, I agree with you completely. I feel Jimmy Butler had every right to make his message known, and honestly, not having a name on the back of your uniform was probably one of the strongest messages I've heard throughout this whole bubble situation and their fight for social injustice. So, and Ruth, Ruth, talk- Ruth, real quick, Ruth, real quick, I just wanted to say too. Every coach of like, I mean, you, you can say like national teams, but these coaches have always heard a lot of great coaches say the the name on the front of the jersey. I mean, it's, it's more so for Olympics, but like the name on the front of the jersey is a lot more important than the one on the back. So when you're playing for a cause and an issue and everything, it doesn't. I mean, it's a team thing. So that's that's another reason why I love what Jimmy Butler did. No, absolutely. And we have one more topic to brush on before we're going to switch into a different league. The Magic, oh man, they had such a great game going on against Brooklyn this weekend. And then the unthinkable happened. Jonathan Isaac is down with an ACL injury and re-injured the knee that he just got back from rehabbing. Alex Fleming, I want to know your take to the Magic. Just call it quits now. Oh, I can't believe you started with me. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the magic and let's talk about Jonathan Isaac. All right. They, I actually wrote an article called can't win for losing because whenever these clowns and that's the right word, these clowns were judging Jonathan Isaac for standing, not knowing that he was quite religious and he loves anyone and everyone. I felt taken aback. I couldn't have been in that room when the bleacher report reporter asked him, do black lives matter to you? How in the hell can you be so damn condescending asking a black man if black lives matter to him? With that being said, so you're up 28 points. It's 86 to 114. You only played 14 minutes and 55 seconds. So don't look at Clifford. Don't look at Clifford. Number two, why are you out there, bro? I understand, but why are you out there? Number three, you take a chance of getting hurt anytime you're back on the court. He hasn't logged a full game since January. As Jake said earlier, he had missed 31 games. They had learned to play without him. With him, they're a dangerous team because everybody knows how to get their shot. There's different ball makers because they knew how to generate it. And Isaac can ball. He can play. He was carried out in a wheelchair. Now, all I see from these clowns in the Orlando Magic fan group, yeah, damn right I'm calling you out, is I bet you he'll kneel now, or better yet, damn, the only good one is gone. Who the hell do you people think you are to judge a man in his First Amendment right? Better yet, let me flip it. Let's say that he did kneel. That's solidarity with his team. But yet his team already had his back. They know he's an individual, and there was nothing to say and nothing to blame. He stood up for what he thought was right because he thought himself maybe kneeling isn't best for social justice when it comes to equality for black people. And black people were the first people to attack him. Shame on you. Now, as far as the Orlando Magic is concerned, I think they hold on to the seventh seed because I think the Brooklyn Nets are a bunch of bums and Washington's not going to catch up to them. They're probably going to face Toronto. Do I like their chances against Toronto without Jonathan Isaac? No. But I think Clifford needs credit 
increasing his rotation from a usual nine man to a 12 now. Mobamba is going to have to play and fill that hole that Jonathan Isaac has taken back. I'm not a big fan of Enos, but he doesn't turn the ball over. I'm hoping the Magic can get maybe a first-round upset, but I don't have high hopes for them. We all know that the Magic are going home soon. Eric Wilson, I'm going to have you chime in on this conversation because I know you've been dying to talk to us. So, Eric Wilson, the original host of the Sports Arena, will be joining us. So, thanks for having me on. I apologize. Oh, my God, it's emoji. <laughs> yes, I apologize for the avatar, y'all. It's, it's, uh, it's been one of those nights. Let me just say this. When it comes to Jonathan Isaac, Alex and I have covered this man for two seasons. So we've gotten to know and talk to him both on a professional and a personal level. And I will say this, as I've said across Twitter, know what's in this man's heart before you trash his image. And I think that's the problem that a lot of media people have. They just want that sound bite. There are so many times, and I, I don't want, I'm not going to get into it tonight because you guys have a great run. I'm going to let y'all get continue on but thank you for letting me be a part of this that's really all i wanted to say know what's in a person's heart before you go and tarnish all the work that they've done for the betterment of themselves and others absolutely i couldn't agree more mike do you want to wrap up this topic before we move on yeah i mean it's a, i mean to like it, it is terrible to see the injury and i mean again i know a player wants to get back and like alex and jake were saying missing those games obviously was huge and you want to be with your team but I mean yeah hindsight we could all say he probably shouldn't have been playing and yeah for those people that I didn't even really I mean I, I don't even like to give them credit or anything for going after him because again being a man of faith and I <laughs> I just can't the whole point of it is if you you can support things but you don't you're not you're not unsupportive of something if you're not doing what everyone else is doing and the message he's trying to he's sending and what he's out there doing in the community. So I just, again, social media is great, but when you get these trolls and these clueless people, it's, it's all the more frustrating the injury. I mean, for anyone, I've always said this with anyone like, look, there are many teams that I despise, as you know, obviously in football, despise the Redskins. I despise the Eagles. I will never root for an injury of any freaking player. I know there's Jason Witten. I love it. Um, no, but I, I will never root for an injury of a player. And for people to sit there and do that for a person that's yeah. worked obviously hard to get to where they are. And yes, people will say sacrifice or they had talent, they got coached up, whatever. They still work extremely hard. And for anybody to sit there and, you know, celebrate an injury, it's just, it's beyond pathetic and, They've never been on a field, a court, or anything at any level because being on a field when you've seen injuries, it's like, oh, God. It's like you, you don't – I don't care if it's just, a, I mean, you know, a dislocated finger, which isn't that bad. It's it's absolutely pathetic what those trolls, cl clowns, as Alex said, and he's right, clowns yeah. did. And, I mean, you, you wish him, you know, nothing but the best and, you know, a speedy recovery for the guy to come back. But, man, it, you're right. It is a tough blow for Orlando. I mean, they may have had a chance against Toronto, but – Probably not much now. Jake, would you like to add anything before we move on? Yes, I would. I'd like anybody right now that bought a Magic jersey that has Jonathan Isaac's number on it, I'd like you to tell me what pick he had in round one with the Orlando Magic for me to even think that you are a fan. I was sick to my stomach when I read that in the Daily Caller about that, how it was like a pride to America, when actually more it was about his religious beliefs. And if you're going to bring this up, why don't we talk about Meyer, Myers Leonard for the Miami Heat, who actually stood during the national anthem because he was standing for his two brothers that were serving in the Marines. If you're going to have a problem, whether somebody kneels or stands right now, seriously, take your remote control and turn it off. OK, I'm getting sick and tired of this. This is a freedom of expression, a freedom of speech. OK, so if somebody believes that I'm going to stand with my hand over my heart, that's what I believe. But if my friend across the right side is going to kneel for him, fine, take a knee. It's the same thing we're seeing in the NHL with Matt Dumba. All right. Enough is enough. I've had it. It's patronizing. It's disgusting. And it continuously shows inequality in a social way. So I'm sick and tired of it. And then you're rooting for somebody to get injured. This is a guy who went through 31 games missing. He missed 31 games because of a knee injury. I met Jonathan Isaac once. I interviewed the guy. 
nicest guy ever. I mean, I was just flabbergasted how much passion this kid has, how much how much uh, intelligence he had towards the game of basketball, towards the Orlando Magic. He loves what he gets to do because he is blessed to be able to do it. And if you seriously was one of those people that rooted on him after he got a torn ACL, to hell with you. Yes. No, for real. I agree with you 100%. It is – we live in a dark world, and sometimes people, they – you know, have some opinions that they like to share. Alex Fleming, I'm going to let you get one last thing in before we switch gears here. I want all of these people hating on Jonathan Isaac and all these black players that are kneeling for these Black Lives Matter. I want you to have that same energy whenever the Stars and the Golden Knights of hockey were kneeling during the national anthem to show solidarity for their brothers in arms. If you're going to throw that heat to African-Americans, how about you throw that same damn heat to Caucasians who know what the hell's going on and see the unrest in this country? Absolutely. And they also, knelt, they also knelt for the Canadian national anthem too, which was huge. They did it for both. So, I mean, they're, you're, you're right there, Alex. They're definitely, they're definitely picking up the torch for that too. Really standing. Go ahead, Jake. Everybody's doing it in different ways. The Chicago Blackhawks and the Edmonton Oilers, when we had our opening night of the NHL, they stood in a circle of unity. They had Matt Dumba of the Minnesota Wild come out in what he believed was going to be his peaceful protest and speak for about a good couple of minutes. Everybody has a different way of peacefully protesting. If you don't respect it, then just be quiet. Absolutely. As I mentioned before, we do live in a dark world and sometimes people voice their opinions that they sh probably should think about or do a little bit of research before they put things out there. Oh, but we're going to wrap things up with the NBA and we're going to be moving on. I have Jake Ronholt from Turning Point Podcast, Michael Caratanudo from Believe Impact 12, and Alex Fleming from Turk Top Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Make sure you are checking out all these men. They have a lot going on. And with sports being back, you cannot shut us up at this point. <laughs> so, with the dark world that we obviously live in, uh, we've had some light be shed on the XFL. <laughs> we found our savior. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson has partnered up and have become a co-owner, I believe, for the XFL League. Alex Fleming, with your turf talk, I want to know, how do you feel about the XFL coming back with Dwayne Johnson in the reins? Can you smell what the Terramana is cooking? <laughs> oh, By the nice. way, his ex-wife happens to be his business partner, who's the actual owner of the uh, XFL. He's also partnered with Redbird Carpentry to make this happen. Look, you don't want whoever that clown in, in the office is as an owner. Uh, Oliver Luck messed this thing up, and Vince McMahon gave up on this. I actually have hope that The Rock can turn around the XFL and make this a more minority-owned business. Guys, 2020 has been the weirdest year, but you know what I've noticed in 2020? Patrick Mahomes is a part-time owner or part owner of the Kansas City Royals. The Rock just bought, just bought an entire franchise. Oh, and let me give a shout out to Bill Russell, who made the WCC, that's the West Coast Conference for those who don't know, the first ever Division One to actually have the Russell rule, which is going to show off and portray more minorities in position of powers in collegiate sports. It's a different time. So for all you fake snowflakes who think the Confederate flag's about heritage, or you want your country back, after all these sorry sons of bitches are kneeling, or better yet, shut up and dribble. I just want to pay for your entertainment, but I won't let you date my daughter. It's time for you to get a wake-up call. Freddy Cougar is your nightmare, and it's called the black man. And I'm so damn happy that The Rock bought the XFL, because now you got nowhere to run. NHL players are kneeling. NASCAR's got black people driving. There's no more Confederate flags. MLB is no longer the pastime because they're getting sick at strip bars. Oh, and the NBA is strong. Zero for 346 for COVID testing. So what you going to do when the minorities come wild for you? <laughs> I love it, wow. Jake. I'm swinging it to you. <laughs> Say again? 
Oh, that's, I'm that's me. To oh you. goodness. Um, <laughs> well, first off, thank you, Alex. That was beautiful. Uh, well spoken. Can't wait for your next uh, protest coming up here. Uh, but man, alive. Dwayne Johnson. That was one of the best things ever. I read that this morning. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. It's like a lost episode of Ballers. It's kind of funny. When you watch Ballers in their latter seasons, it, it becomes more socially talkative. It becomes more political with it. And it just kind of feels like Spencer Strasmore now just bought a franchise. Now he's the commissioner of the XFL. Look, the XFL was actually a lot of fun. We actually had the likes of Alex and Eric actually doing the Tampa Bay Vipers. They were covering them. So now you're giving back jobs to people in sports casting that unfortunately were for load out of their jobs at this point. And now you'll be able to give them an opportunity in the spring to be able to work with the XFL, work with players that get this opportunity again. I do believe that Dwayne Johnson is going to make some changes. I do believe that things are going to happen. And don't be a bit surprised if you start hearing this word. Kaepernick. Don't be a bit surprised at that. Kaepernick coming to the XFL. Is that where you're stating, James? Remind yourself, Dwayne Johnson was one of his biggest supporters when this whole thing happened. He quoted it. And this is a guy who does not care what anybody thinks of him. He is a guy that gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning. He always imagined himself at the, at the end of a wall, just by a wall being pushed on, and he has to push his way out of it. That's who Dwayne Johnson is, and he's going to continuously be that person. He knows that there are going to be things that people are going to like. Some people are not going to like. Guess what? He doesn't care. He always has been that way since he was stuck when he was uh, kicked off his semi-pro team 4 o'clock in the morning and had $7 to his name. Seven dollars to his name, and now he just bought a whole franchise. See, that's how you know people don't give up. Jake, you forgot to mention me when it came to the XFL Vipers. I was I'm a so huge sorry, fan of that. It's okay, it's all good. I'm it's holding on to this because I'm hoping it will still be relevant up in the next coming season. But Mike Caratanudo, I'm bringing it to you. How do you feel about Dwayne Johnson taking a step for the XFL? Do you see it thriving? Well, I mean, he's always been a football guy. I mean, he did play on those Miami teams. Uh, the Hurricanes back in the day, and he was dominant. Pretty, he was really surprised he didn't get the career. And then he didn't go back. He went to Canada, and then he got cut, and he was home, and he was going to go back. And he told his dad he wanted to wrestle, but he can, he, he can, he's he's had the right business plan and idea, and he always he believes in himself. And I was going to to piggyback off Jake. I mean, getting up at four a.m. doing the the crazy workouts. I mean, he can, he. He could lead it in the right direction, and I don't think—I mean, I don't think it was going in a bad direction. I know COVID screwed it up, obviously. Yeah. Um, and as, for the Kaepernick thing, I mean, I don't know. I, I just—if he feels like playing football, because we've talked about this before, and I know Alex and I agree on this. I mean, does he even play? Does he even feel like playing football? And I mean, does he—if if he doesn't, fine. I mean, that's totally fine. But I just think that Kaepernick. I think he would play. Jake, but I mean, it's a dude that belongs in the NFL. Like he, he's we've we've discussed that nauseum. He's better than pretty much ninety percent of the backups. Maybe not every single one, but like ninety five percent of the backups. Whatever you want to say, a very high amount. So, but what the Rock did, I mean, it's no, it's really no surprise. And the guy's about obviously running things smart, being successful. So as long as he keeps, you know, I, I don't know if we need to talk to the kicker after he misses a field goal because like who really wants to talk after they miss. But I did like the interaction. I did like how it was, how they how they were able to kind of get that real time reaction in a way. But I mean, it's it's it to me, it's just going to take off. If it doesn't, I would be very, very surprised. But and hopefully, it gets some players to the NFL because inevitably, that's what it's about. That's why they're playing it after the NFL season, and that's what it's about. But good kudos to the Alex, Rock. I mean, yeah. Very excited about the moves. Alex, I want to know your take on it because, you know, a lot of people say that anything the Rock touches touches or turns to gold. Do you see the XFL making a comeback? And will Kaepernick join? Or will AB join? There's a lot of players that we could discuss. Hey, 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 hey. That, that AB talk needs to stop. Stop with that AB talk. That's an NFL player. Look, it, I find it quite funny that you're going to – suspend the man who's been retired. Maybe the paperwork's not official, but it's kind of hard to suspend a retired individual. So look for an NFL team, Baltimore, to probably take a chance on him. Now, as far as Kaepernick is concerned, what I want to come back to all these whiny 
snowflake. I want my country back conservatives who wouldn't give a damn about you if you were shot in the street, yet want to bitch and complain if you were back in the NFL or XFL? Hell no. I'll continue being an activist and let Nike pay me for all you soft spot moist. I had to edit myself. Now, with the XFL, I actually see it coming back. I could see it being successful under The Rock because he was a Miami Hurricane. That was his first love. And everything that The Rock touches to go. He's one of the top actors in Hollywood. His Terra Mana tequila flies off shelves. The Reposado is better than the Blanco, by the way. Um, the Reposado was a hit. Um, Rundown was a hit. Anything The Rock does is a winner. The Rock is a Republican, and I would actually vote for him if we actually had somebody to vote for in a presidential election. Don't sleep on The Rock, and don't you dare turn your back on him, because I guarantee you, now that The Rock, a.k.a. his ex-wife, owns the XFL, I think Vince McMahon might just try to reinvest in some of the XFL. And once some of these Karens actually start wearing these damn masks and quit bitching about all this kneeling, we can actually have some XFL in the springtime so we can have football year round. Oh, See, 2020. That's, what, that's the purpose of, that was originally the purpose of the XFL because they were, they kicked off their season a week after Ooh. the Super Bowl. So it was to keep us going, us at addicts, those football addicts going all year long. So I would be so excited. And when the XFL does come back, I know it's going to be a strong house. So I'm super excited to have Dwayne Johnson on board with that. And he's going to make it happen for us. All right, gentlemen, we are going to wrap things up here with the sports arena. Thank you so much, Jake Ronholt with Turning Point Podcast, telling both sides of the story. We also have Michael Caratanudo out of as Arizona with Believe in the Pac-12. Make sure you guys are just taking some time to check out his work because he's been doing phenomenal. And then lastly, and of course, the most important, Alex Fleming <laughs> with Turf Talk. It's been a total Wash pleasure. Hand, hand. <laughs> Wash those hands and wear those masks and continue to fight for social justice. This is Ruth, the Truth Caggy S. Anything's off. You guys enjoy the rest of your night.